Greetings, Saints, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin, and today I have the awesome pleasure of sitting with my special guest, Ms. Shirley Williams of Dominion Family Services. Welcome, Shirley. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you, and thank you, Barbara. Hey, it is a pleasure. It is truly my pleasure. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna first read Dominion's. Um, mission statement, mm -hmm. tell a little bit about Dominion, and then I want you to tell me what it is that you do there, why you do what you do. Uh, Dominion Family Services, it says when you go to their website that change is not impossible. At Dominion Family Services, you believe that getting to the root cause of violent behavior and understanding the reasons we turn to violence is the beginning of change. We believe that a converted heart and an educated mind can bring about good character. All of us must buy into the notions of violence-free families in order for the next generation to see change. Your batterer intervention programs are unique because they offer a holistic approach to interpersonal violence issues. They give the participant tools for change and techniques for managing their violent behavior in a positive way. Your men at work programs are designed at their root to keep victims safe, bring accountability, and then help men better engage in family and community life. So your, your goals are to aid families in developing skills, to educate men by providing a variety of programs, to eliminate unwanted social behaviors, to hold ourselves accountable for the contribution we as men have made to the environment of violence, whether good or bad, and your values uh, are safety in families, equality in all relationships, progressive thinking, knowledge, and integrity. So I think that that is a great um, place to start about everything it is that you're doing. Uh, I share with you that I was a domestic violence advocate, and we always go out for the survivors, uh, you know, of domestic violence, but I never really saw anybody addressing the other side of that. So I think that this is good. This is a preventative, you know, more uh, proactive instead of reactive kind of approach to that. So, Ms. Shirley, tell me a little bit about how long you've been with Dominion uh, Family Services and uh, why you're doing what you do. Um, I'm one of the co-founders okay. of Dominion Family Services, mm -hmm. and Dominion was birthed out of a shelter, uh, in a house um, of a, a shelter for women and children okay. of domestic violence that the YWCA mm -hmm. uh, have in, the, in Detroit. Right. So one day I was, um, I, I used to work there part time, and it just hit me one day because we always have the same when to go out into the community and we do the presentations mm -hmm. that a woman will leave her her abuser seven times before she really divorced herself okay. from her abuser but what she would do she would either change faces but same character okay so one day it just hit me if we do not help the counterpart mm -hmm. domestic violence will never end Amen. and most domestic violence um, agency they always say we're here to end domestic violence mm -hmm. but it will never end because there's one thing for sure a woman is going to have a, a man exactly. you know she'll change characters she'll change faces or something like that but we need to address the issues of men yeah. so Dominion Family Services was birthed out of that yeah. so father Michael and his wife and I we sat down and we talked about what can we do how can we do it so we started Dominion okay. Family Services in 1995 okay and I have a little with a little history with Father Michael because we worked together at Michigan Bell. Um, he was a technician and I was his router, you know, and mm -hmm. anybody that heard my story, the first interview, you know, I talked about uh, routing the technicians, um, dispatching, you know, when they came in, they called me, I would send them on their routes and I tried to line up their um, loads for the day as best as I could to make sure they didn't get a milkman route, that they stay kind of strategically, you know, in the area in which they were supposed to uh, do the service. And then I ran into Father um, or at a um, uh, nonprofit workshop. So I, I thank God for, you know, him crossing my path again mm -hmm. um, in a totally different capacity. You know, I saw him with the, you know, like I didn't, you know, I hadn't had any contact with them. So I really think that this is good because I always believe that in order to address a problem, you really need to get to the root of that problem. You know, we can put a Band-Aid on a lot of things, we can do it, but until we find out why 
people are really doing some of the things that they're doing, you know, we never really get rid of the problem. So I, I guess that what you guys are doing, you know, hopefully you're addressing the problem that one day you, you're going to go out of business. You know, one day. We would like to do that. Yeah, one day. <laughs> if you, you know, if everything is working the way it's supposed to work, then yes. you will be, you know, out of a job. You, you know, we'll be trying to find something else to do, you know. Well, that's part of, that's one of our philosophies mm -hmm. is to get to the root of the problem okay. because Dominion Family Services, the name itself mm -hmm. is a biblical name. Okay. Uh, we believe that men are supposed to have first take dominion over themselves, okay. then take dominion over their families, and then they're able to take dominion over their community. And in that way, the, the family oriented, the, the, the peace that needs to be in a community, mm -hmm. the, the unification that needs to be in a community, and the protection that's supposed to be in a community would do that if a man right. discover within himself who he is, yes. what he wants, mm -hmm. and what he needs. One will outweigh the other. Mm -hmm. But we have found out a lot of men and women mm -hmm. do not know who they are, no what they want, and what they need. So these are the some these are some of the tools that we give our clients who come to us. Mm -hmm. We try to give them first to identify not you know, they have been mandated by the courts to come to us. Okay. And we have some walk ins, mm -hmm. men who realize that they need some issues around domestic violence, family issues okay. and anger management. Right. But the one of the things where we always let them know that we're not gonna talk about your partner. Okay. We're going to talk about what's going on with you. All right. Let's get to the root and the cause of your issue. Mm -hmm. And I used to, in, in being an advocate for women, mm -hmm. uh, uh, victims of domestic violence, I always tell them, you know, the target is you, mm -hmm. but the problem is not you. Right. The problem is him. Right. It's something going on in his life that he is unresolved, that he's taking it out on, on you him. because you're the closest person to him. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about some of the programs that you offer. I'm going to go through quickly and just bring, you know, talk about them. Then we'll go back and you'll tell me a little bit about what's going on. You have the Men at Work program. You have the Anger Management program. You have the Assaulted uh, Offenders program, you have the Fatherhood Initiative program, Women's Network, Link to Link, and then you also have other services and referrals that you have like drug and alcohol testing, mm -hmm. marijuana insight program, driving while license suspended, give the gift of sight, and a child therapist. So let's take it from the top. Let's go with Men at Work. Tell me a little bit about that program. I see that it's offered for 26 to 52 weeks. How do the Men at Work program, how would somebody um, get into that program? Uh, one or two ways. They can volunteer, mm -hmm. find out that something's going on with them in their relationships, okay. uh, in their marriage or with a significant other, mm -hmm. and they can enroll for 26 weeks. Okay. Um, the 52 weeks come from if we have someone mandated from the courts, if it's their second offense, then they have to do 52 weeks of uh, domestic violence. Okay. And the 26 weeks is the first offense of 26 weeks of domestic violence. Okay. And this is where they get the understanding about the law, why they got arrested, what was the court procedure, what's going to happen if, if, this, if you allow this behavior to continue in your relationship, mm -hmm. and then we get into who they are and what they want and what they need okay. and how to have a healthy relationship. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the next one is... Um, the next program that you have is... The anger management program. Ang anger management is for anybody. Okay. You could have had a problem on your job. Okay. Yeah, uh, could have had a problem with a neighbor, and the police had to come out and arrest you. All right. And you get charged with anger management issues, anger issues. Okay. So what they would do, they would send you, send the, the persons to us, be male or female, mm -hmm. um, for 16 weeks of anger management. Okay. Now in the anger management program, it's the same philosophy. You must find out who you are, mm -hmm. what you want what you need, what's your issues, get to the root of your issues. And sometimes these issues go way back from childhood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Okay, then the Assaultive Offenders Program, AOP. Uh, the Assaultive Offenders Program is for those returning citizens, those people who have been incarcerated mm -hmm. and uh, whatever the charges or whatever the crime they've committed, they will have to take an Assaultive Offenders program. So what usually happened, while they incarcerated, they will send us a letter asking to be in our program on our list so when they get out they can come to us for 16 weeks. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. So um, 
the assault of offenders. So these are people you say that are incarcerated. Correct. They come out. And again, this is uh, man, woman, or child. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, male or female. Male or female. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then your fatherhood initiative program. Fatherhood initiative is surrounding to teach a man how to you know, navigate him, how to pay his child support, okay. get along with his child's mother, okay. and how to manage his uh, affairs financially, and all to, also to assist him in some other needs. If he needs GED, if he needs um, employment skills, we try to work with men in that area. Okay. And then you have the Women's Network. The Women's Network is for female offenders. Now, um, the laws changed in 1995. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, and uh, Dominion used to work with the Detroit Police Department Domestic Violence Unit. In fact, we was on the scene at the very beginning of the development of that. Mm -hmm. So, it was, if a police officer comes out, mm -hmm. His job is to arrest the primary aggressor. Exactly. Now, if it appears that she is the primary aggressor, mm -hmm. well, she's going to get arrested. Okay. So she will have to go through the same thing that men have to go through. Right. Go to take uh, domestic violence classes, sometimes take anger management classes. Mm -hmm. So that's in the women's network. Also, but with me, I always say that's a two-sided coin mm -hmm. because a, a lot of the women, they will come in to the, our program and they will say, well, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. Right. Uh, you may have been the victim at one time, but right now because the police is involved, the law is involved in your life, mm -hmm. and they say that you was a primary aggressor, mm -hmm. so you have to go through this class. But in this particular class, uh, we deal with victimization. Mm -hmm. We deal with the law. We deal with uh, their situations and who they are and what they want and what they need okay. because it's all about change. Exactly. Now, when um, in 1995, from 95 to 98, you know, I worked with Capital Area Response Effort in Lansing, and um, I found that when I moved back, I still wanted to continue being a domestic violence advocate, but it was just so hard to find uh programs in the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. you know, geared for people in the city. So I signed up with First Step, but everything was in Trent and Gross Hill or, you know, they address things outside of the skirts of Detroit. Mm -hmm. But it was nothing that I looked, f nothing that I found like the program that they had in Lansing because there we carried a pager. You know, if they got a domestic call, the Lansing Police Department, they paged us, the advocates. We would go out with the police or meet the police at the hospital, the homes, the police station, or wherever they were. We were able to be there for the victim because nine times out of ten, you know, the victim has been in this situation for many, uh, you know, for some time, and they don't have the support of their family or friends anymore, you know, because everybody's probably said to them whatever, you know, and they're still in the situation. So we were there just for support. We would follow up, go file, uh, you know, with them to do PPOs. We didn't lend money. We didn't give rides, but we were there for them, you know, because sometimes uh, they just needed somebody to hear what they had to say, somebody to support them, somebody to just, you know, give them encouragement where they needed encouragement. You find a lot of times that the they don't go out and they say they will follow up, you know, but a lot of times if they don't have anybody there with them, they are not going to follow up and file that PPO or go to court or do, you know, they're going to drop everything. And that's when the laws change as well because it became that you don't have to file. If the police come out, once they make the arrest, then it's up to the courts. And now it's no longer up to the women. So I think that that is really good. I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. in 96, 98, mm -hmm. Uh, when Lieutenant Brown started the domestic violence unit in the Detroit Police Department, okay. um, I was a crisis. I was one of their first crisis intervention specialists okay. in Detroit, and I worked the west side, and we had a lady work the east side, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. I did personal protection orders. Mm -hmm. I advocated for them. I went to court with them, right. and I went uh, went out with the police uh, officers. Mm -hmm. We called it the second response team. We were under a special grant for six years, right. and what the what they call the black and white will go out and make the place secure mm -hmm. and then the detectives would come I travel with the detectives okay. to advocate for that for the woman to see to assess the scene mm -hmm. to see what uh, what she needed what the children needed and what 
he needed. Okay. He got locked up. I would tell her, this is what I need to do for, with you. Mm -hmm. uh, get a personal protection order. Uh, do you want to stay here? How, how long you want to stay? If you need going to a shelter, I got her into a shelter. Okay. And that went on for about six years. It was, it was a very good program. Okay. I call it that really support. Right. And of course, Federal government money got cut, so right. the program was cut. Right, okay, and that's that's really sad. So I think that, so Dominion Family Services is kind of picking up where the programs were cut there. I mean, but at least you're giving the people the knowledge that they need, right. you know, the help that they need to, right. you know, to prevent uh, becoming victims, you know, right. to teach them. Because uh, Dominion was part of that particular program, so I, I kind of stepped off the board of Dominion okay. and became a staff of Dominion. Okay. And another program that we had that we really want to get back in is to what we call male advocates. Okay. When a guy is locked up, let a, one of a male advocate go talk to him and say, this is what's going to happen with you now. Right. This is the process you got to walk through. Okay. You know, and since you've been angry, this is happening, you're in a bad relationship, mm -hmm. and this is what you need to do. You really need to come over here and get some classes, get some tools, mm -hmm. so you'll learn how to have a, a good relationship so you can be a good father, okay. and so forth and so on. But, uh, like I said, funding just stopped us from doing those kind of things. So what we need are the all good, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country, their community, yes. their city. Yes. So if we can find some guys, and so if people want to volunteer, I guess I'm going to stop and do a commercial break right now for okay. Dominion. Okay. You know, so <laughs> if, if there are some men out there that really want to volunteer and give back to the community, then please reach out to Dominion Family Services. Look at the programs that they're offering and see what it is, how you can help, how you can get in where you fit in and help the people that need the help. So what is the way website that they can go to or a number that they can call if they wanted to volunteer, come in, find out about your programs and see how they can help you. Uh, the website is uh, dominionfamilyservices.org or, mm -hmm. or they can call 248-356-1700. Okay. That's 248-356-1700. Okay, you got that. Dominionfamilyservices.org. Give me that number one more time. 248 Three five six one seven zero zero. All right. So now let's talk about your next. Uh, the link to link. What is the link to link? Link to link like? is uh, about um, HIV okay. and AIDS. Mm -hmm. uh, we have found out in the heterosexual community, this there's not a lot being taught about that. Uh, we, we know about homosexuality and their behavior, but we, we're finding that in the heterosexual community, the AIDS and HIV is very high, especially among women. Yeah. So what we, what we have decided to do to educate our people about HIV and AIDS and how to be safe, okay. how to have safe sex, how to make better choices, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, we live in a different new world today, oh, and it's like there's no holes bar, right. and everybody do everything. <laughs> yes, but you can't really do everything if you're not safe, exactly. because it's, it's killing us, Most especially in the African American community. It's killing us. Yeah, yeah. So we we have the link to link. That's mm -hmm. what we call a link to link, mm -hmm. to teach men and women how to have healthy sexual relationships. So, Ms. Shirley, then the other services and referrals, like I say, so you do drug and alcohol testing? Yes. You do that for other companies or you, you I mean, if someone is, has a job interview, they could come to you and get the drug and alcohol testing? Or how does that work? It's all of our clients, we offer, okay. you know, um, drug testing mm -hmm. because it's, they do, we do it three times when they first come in, all right. in the middle of the program okay. and at the end of the program mm -hmm. because substance abuse there's a lot of calls. It's not, I wouldn't say this, it's not the cause of domestic violence. Yeah. Well, he was drunk or he was high or mm -hmm. she was drunk. And, no, that's just a, a sidebar. Exactly. So a we trigger. like, that's a, one of the triggers. Right. That's all it is. Right. So we do drug testing. Okay. And what is the uh, Marijuana Insight Program? Marijuana Insight Program, people are being arrested for <laughs> smoking marijuana. Okay. So they have to take some classes. So we offer marijuana insight. And what it is, is um, if, if it's a whole group of people, it's mm -hmm. about a six hour course okay. one time. Mm -hmm. And we teach them what marijuana does to the body, okay. to the mind, okay. and to your emotions. Okay. 
and driving while license suspended. Well, what is that? Um, th that's something we haven't changed on our website okay. yet. Right. We used to offer that, but mm -hmm. that's about in the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, the laws have changed again. Okay. And it's like, it's, um, I just found out in the past couple of years how many people drive yes. with suspended <laughs> license. When you get a ticket, Pay, pay to take it. <laughs> but they have to come and take classes okay. to see how unsafe it is. All right, mm -hmm. right. And give the gift of sight. Is that a uh, organ donation? Uh, the gift of sight is a foundation mm -hmm. uh, that's in this country where they do free eye exams. Okay. And you get free glasses. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. all right. And a child therapist. Was um, if, if we have a, a, a parent who has a child who's gone through some trauma, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a referral that we send the children to okay. for some therapy. Okay, so you guys offer a, um, a lot of services. Like I said, I saw a father, or it probably was like sometime last year, and, and um, I you know, told him that I wanted to have him on the show, and he said, Ms. Shirley would be the best person to sit down and talk with you, you know, about the programs, about the domestic violence, because I have, you know, organization that I'm uh, trying to get off the ground, Women in Power Across the Path. It's a network of women uplifting, encouraging, inspiring, and motivating women and young girls who suffer from abuse, you know, because mm -hmm. I had, uh, I myself am a survivor of domestic violence, sexual abuse, mm -hmm. and so I know for a fact that, you know, when you grow up and there are a lot of things that you're doing mm -hmm. and you're going through life, uh, the root cause of most of those issues are, you know, way from childhood, yes. and if they're not addressed, yes. then it just handed down from generation to generation to generation. You know, we definitely need to address that. I think that what you guys are doing is really great, really, really, really great. I wish I knew, you know, back in the day when I was coming up, like, uh, to five years ago when I was like 20, mm -hmm. you know, you get me? I got you. <laughs> We want to exactly, that. exactly, <laughs> you know, but I wish that when I was coming up as a young girl that, you know, there was somebody either that I could talk to yes. or, you know, that was there that, because then it was like taboo. You didn't talk about, you know, things that you were going through. You dealt with it, you know. Your mom said you get a good man if he's paying the bills and blah, blah. You know, you don't worry about that. So, now it's, you, Barbara, it's still the same thing now. Really? It really is. It's sad. Because I'm working with a group of women now, we are addressing sexual assault, mm -hmm. the incest, the mm -hmm. rape that's going on in these relationships. Mm -hmm. It is unbelievable. And the women are staying with the people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's something we don't talk about. Right. And see, and that's where I say well, we need to empower women. to, to They need to know that the power is within, not without. You don't need a man to make you strong. And I'm not trying to... Uh, you know, downplay the men. You right. know, there are good men out here. You right. know, but it has to be a healthy relationship. Healthy. You have to know who you are. You know, you have to be confident in knowing that. You know, see, Miss Shirley, I did a show on celibacy. I've been by myself since 2004. You know, without a man, just me and Jesus. You know, learning how to be in a relationship, learning how to love Barbara Dean Franklin okay. for once in my life. You know, because I went from man to man. There were so many things that I went through, but I'm confident in who I am all of me you know you know I don't have to worry about trying to lose weight for somebody trying to do this with everything that I do is to the glory of God and to Barbara Dean Franklin you know and I think that if we just can help our young women all women as well thank you, you know if we help them know that I mean the power that we have when we just take our power back you know and so what we need to do as women is you know come together support each other be real with each other not backstabbing not check caddy and you know it, it is time for us to come together because as women you know they say behind every a good man there is a good woman mm -hmm. as a strong woman I mean you know look at our president's wife you know the things that she brings and the power power that she has if we as women you know the young girls you know just get yourself together just know the power that is within you you know if you don't know I mean you know there are programs that are out here that are helping people today you know there are women that are giving themselves back say just different you know programs that are out there that want to help the young girls get out of abusive relationships yes. you know to know who they are to be confident in their walk yes. you know so um, I really appreciate what you're doing. You said that you were an international world traveler. Give me a little bit about where you've gone and some of the things that you, you, you're doing as you travel. 
1987, I've been really going in and out of the country doing missionary work, mm -hmm. uh, going to the areas of poverty. Uh, one of the best trips that I've ever had was in Yugoslavia, where I lived with the people for three uh, three weeks, and it was at the time that the Bosnian War was going on. And to to go into a country, to see in the stores there was nothing on the shelves, mm -hmm. and people had to, uh, what they had to eat was little of nothing. Mm -hmm. But I saw the move of God mm -hmm. everywhere I went. I went into a woman's home. She, they wanted to serve me. Mm -hmm. Some of them had never seen an African American, uh, never seen a black woman. Okay. And um, of course, I got called out my name by a little girl. Mm -hmm. I said it was all right, but okay. she was in my lap before I left. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but the thing was, yes. uh, the humbleness, what happened in that country, they told me they woke up one day mm -hmm. and the money went, wasn't worth nothing. Mm. And the survival was it. So that was one of the best trips I've ever had. I really appreciated Paul and Peter, them, how they walked. Because I had to walk everywhere. Because oh, right. uh, a two-liter gasoline cost $10. Mm. And they said, in Yugoslavia at that time, they said, we used to be a young America. Mm. They said, it's going to happen in America. I said, oh, I don't think we can be able to handle this. Mm -mm. You know? mm. But the thing is, so I've been to Africa twice. Right. I've been to uh, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and I've been to Senegal. Uh, in Zimbabwe, we went to an orphanage and we took clothes and we bought some biddies so they can start a chicken farm right. so they can support themselves. Mm -hmm. And in, in, uh, in Dakar, Senegal, mm -hmm. I went to um, a clinic where this doctor was seeing at least 200 women a day, whatever their ailment was. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and his office was, it wasn't, he didn't have the, the best, up to date. Right. So we took money. We bought supplies, and okay. we've done a lot of things. It was about five of us okay. ladies then. Okay. So I really enjoy it, and that's, that's my life calling, going abroad, helping women. Now, I want to help women who are in prisons mm -hmm. in other countries because right. women all over have the same issues, trauma, yes. some trauma, yes. whether it's incest, whether it's rape, whether it's poverty, yes. whether it's loss of parents, loss of a child. Mm. Yes. Well, you know, as I listen to you talk, you know, and you say that it's going to happen, they were a young America. It's happening right now, I believe. You know, as I look at my community, you know, I could just only talk about what's in my backyard. Yes. You know, I don't have to go far out. You right. Know? And I look at the, the devastating state of our communities, you know, how there are little kids that are probably not getting anything to eat. Their parents are just neglecting them. You know, yes. you look at the, you know, the incest or the child trafficking, you know, the back door, backstage, or whatever these, you know, websites yes. are that are, you know, that's going on. The way people are just dropping garbage and furniture off in our neighborhoods, trash thrown all over, you know, the streets, and we're not doing anything. We don't come together, you know, but for a while I cleaned up the community, passed out newsletters, say, hey, come on, let's clean up, because mm -hmm. nobody's coming to save us. Right. We have to be strategic. Yes. We've got to come together. Yes. We've got to support one another. Yes. We've got to do this. I can't depend on, you know, Mayor Bing or, you know, even the president, I think, is doing a wonderful job coming mm -hmm. up with programs mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, because mm -hmm. trying to initiate different programs. He has to think out of the box. Yes. It's not like everything is not the way it used to be. Yes. But what are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do to be, you know, to stand up and take change? And I think in the beginning of your, you know, right on your website where it says change is not impossible. No. You know, but it starts within. Right. You know, it, it, it's not something that nobody's going to come in and bring that change. It has to start with your mindset. Yes. yes. You know, we've got to right, have a right attitude. And they said the attitude, you know, reflects your altitude. You yes. know, I just told my girlfriends the other day, I celebrated my uh, 56th birthday party and my retirement party because I retired from AT&T after 36 years. And I said that I was reading a book and it was from Joyce Myers and she was saying that, you know, you can be an eagle and soar. I said, I was tired of walking around like a chicken, you know, just pecking what's on the ground. Yes. I'm ready to soar, you know, and everybody has to have that mentality. I can't say that if my neighbor doesn't, you know, if they're not doing anything, that nothing is going to get done. I have to stand up and, you know, make a difference and make a change. So I'm going to be calling you. Okay. I'm going to be calling uh, uh, Father Orr definitely and um, 
I, I think this is what I want to do. I, I know for a fact that my vision has just linked up with exactly what you guys are doing. So I guess I'm linked to link. At, All right. you know, I guess I'm <laughs> linked to link right now with you guys. So I'll do some volunteer work with you and then just figure out how God is going to use me. But, you know, I thank you so much. I for thank you. It's such a pleasure. Coming, yeah, for sitting down with me. I knew that um, the day that I called you, I left you a message and you called me back. And I think you left me a message and you said, um, you know, I got your message. I'll be with you. I'm taking care of my mom. When you said that, you know, my spirit just jumped right then because I, too, am taking care of my mother. Yes. So a lot of things are falling on us, but we know we can't stop. No, you know, we can't. We, we know that there are things that we must do, must. you know, to bring back the community, yes. you know, to help the community. And you said something about walking like uh, Peter and Paul, you know, God say he'll make you fishers of men, yes. you know, so I'm going to follow you, follow you, you know, so uh, I can be a fisher of men as well. Thank you so much for coming and sitting down with me out of your busy schedule and sharing this information. Definitely will have you back and I will um, definitely have Father Orr on the show with me so we could talk about where he's been, where he is, and where he's going. Wonderful. All Thank right. you, too. Okay. So to uh, my public, my fans, the people that listen to this show each and every day, um, I'm going to ask you one more time, Ms. Mm -hmm. um, Shirley, before I go, I want you to look into that camera. I want you to tell the people, again, about Dominion Family Services, why you do what you do, and how they can reach you, and then we're going to end the show. I want to thank the audience for listening. At Dominion Family Services, we are here to help the family and to healing of the family, beginning with men, for them to understand who they are, that they must change, heal, and grow. And you can reach us at 248-356-1700. That's 248-356-1700. Give us a call. And so to uh, my public, my fans, the people who take the time to look at this show uh, each and every week, I want to say thank you. I truly appreciate your support. I love you. You understand. Okay, from my beating heart to your beating heart. Have a good day.